1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. I don't know where the Lord's taking us right now. I just know that this is where he brought me. I like, I like 1 John because John is so straightforward, so black and white, so light and dark. It's just, you, you get one side of the picture and you can turn around and you see the other side of the picture so plainly, so clearly throughout this book. Okay. Um, let me encourage you, if you have a question as we're going through, this isn't a 250 person congregation. This is just us. If you got a question, ask, please. More like Sunday school. More like Sunday school, yes. Interactive, okay? Participate. If you've got a question or you've got a comment or you remember a scripture that's related to that passage, bring it up. This is what the Lord wants us to do, to share with each other, okay? So don't be ashamed or afraid to speak up. Raise your hand, you know, and as soon as I finish the thought that I'm on, I'll come right to you and, we, and we'll get to it. If I don't, stand up. <laughs> okay? Make sure that I get to you because you have something that the Lord gave you for us. It's not for you to hide under a bushel. It's for everybody, okay? 1 John 5, 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. Is there anyone here that has doubt about their belief that Jesus is the Christ? Do you know what the Christ is? is what is Christ okay what is Messiah what does it mean that's a that's a Hebrew word what does Messiah mean nope the anointed one okay that's what it means in the Greek is is uh, uh, Christ Hebrew is Messiah or Mashiach, and in English it's the anointed one, okay? Jesus, Yeshua, is the anointed one of God that he spoke about throughout the Old Testament. The one to come, the one anointed of God to come into the world to save the world. Who was the first that was charged to do that, that failed? Nope. Good try, though. Good. Good try. Seriously. No. Israel. That's a who. Who was Israel? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob became Israel. Okay. So we have Israel. They were charged with bringing God's word to the world. Did you know that? That was their task. They weren't to keep it to themselves. They were charged with bringing it to the world. For God so loved the world that he sent his son. See, Israel failed to do that because they took their Jewish faith and they said, it's ours. You weren't born into our family, so on you. Okay, and that's what Israel did. That's what, unfortunately, a lot of Christians do. I'm born again <laughs> on you. I'm saved. <laughs> Wrong answer. Go back to chapter 1 or chapter 2 of this verse, of this book, and read that in regards to that. Everyone who loves the Father loves his child. Okay, who is he speaking of? Jesus. Who else? Raise your hand. Okay. Everyone who loves the Father loves his child. We are his children. 
Jesus is the head of the body. Who is the body? Say it again. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Jesus and I, along with you, we are one. Just as a husband and wife, when they're married, they become one flesh. We are the bride of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. We are his bride. When we are joined together, born again, we are one flesh with Jesus. Okay? This is how we know that we love the children, plural, of God. I'm reading from the NIV in case it does not match up with yours at all. By loving God and carrying out his commands. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. Verse 3. This is the love for God. Here it comes. This is the love for God. I don't know how yours reads, but this is what the NIV says. This is the love for God, to obey His commands. Does anybody have any doubts on what the love of God is? To love God. This is the love for God. Now, this is from us to Him. What is it? Obey his commands. What are his commands? Well, they're not burdensome. For everyone born of God has overcome the world. Who's born again? Okay. You have overcome the world. Is that not what it says? Does anybody's Bible say it differently? Okay. Everyone born of God has overcome. That is past tense. It's done. You have overcome the world. It's done. How did you do it? Through Jesus. You didn't do it. He did. You are joined with him and you participate in that overcoming, if you will, with him. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Or just say, this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. That's what did it. Our faith. Where did we get that faith? Say it again, loud. From him. From him. It's him. He gave us the faith to believe. He, Jesus himself spoke to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and told them, they, these are teachers of the law, the Pentateuch, first five books of the Bible. If you'd been in Sunday school this morning, you'd have heard it. You should have been there. <laughs> Our faith he gave us. And he told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're not believers. He told them, the kingdom of God is within you. It's with, they're unbelievers. But the kingdom of God is within them. Before you became born again, the kingdom of God was within you. It still is. The kingdom of God is within you. It's in every single person. There's a responsibility that lies with man. That's a generic term, if you will. To choose. 
Are you going to follow that which is in you? Or are you going to choose your own way? Which is death, by the way. Just so you'll know and be sure of that. Verse 5. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Only. Only. That's the only way. You must believe. What must you believe? That Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. And that's not his name. That's a title, by the way. Jesus, Messiah. Jesus, the anointed one. Okay, remember that. It's, that's not his last name. Um, it's Yeshua Bar uh, Yosef. Yosef. That's Jesus son of Joseph. Yeshua bar Yosef. Okay? That's his name. All right. Who came by water and blood. Very important. Very important. He did not come by water only. We came by water first. Okay? And it is a spirit who testifies. Oh, uh, he did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that testify the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. Do you understand what the water and the blood is? It's important. What is, what is the water and the blood? What is that? Say, say it again. Is it, is it the water is us and the blood is Christ? Is that the difference? Yeah, uh, 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 sort of. Yes, it's on the, you're on the right track. The water is natural birth. Natural birth. He had to be a man just like us. Because a goat or a lamb or a bull is not man. He can't die in our place. It has to be a man, but it has to be a perfect man to pay the price. Wages of sin is death. He had to die. But that death had to be pure. The blood had to be pure. And we'll get to the blood in just a moment. So the water is the natural birth. It shows Jesus to be fully man. He was born a man into this world, just like you and I. Okay, that represents who he is on earth. Remember, he took all of his um, godly characteristics, his godly traits, all of his power and authority, and he set it aside. Okay, he became a man just like us. He had to experience life just like us. Alright? Now, what is the blood? His death. But a little bit more than his death. The blood is the wages that are paid. The, the, not the wages. Um, uh, the redemption. Lost the term. Sorry. What you pay when you redeem something from a recompense, recompense is a good word. It's a good word. It's what's paid for the bill so that it becomes whatever object is purchased, yours. Compensation. Compensation. Yeah, a lot of little terms that we can stick in here. You know, it's just the wages of sin is death. So that's for sin. So if you sin, you must pay death. In order to get out of death, which is where we're at before we're born again, we got to pay something. Something must be paid to overcome death. What's the wages of death? Blood. Who said? God said. Why? I don't know. He's God. I'm not. Why does he require blood? I don't know. 
but he does. But that's why they sacrificed the animals. Right. The blood right. The right. I like the term. It says cover. cover. Good term. Yes. I like what Chuck said. Uh -huh. Not one sin gets into heaven. Yeah. Not one. Not one. Why? What is sin? Death. What's the wages of death? Blood. Blood must be paid to wash away sin and death. Not cover, like you said. Before Christ came, before Jesus came, the blood that was sacrificed, the animal blood that was sacrificed, was impure. It was animal blood. It was a covering so that there could be some form of relationship between God and his creation. The only way that he can do that is if there's no sin. So he covered it over through the sacrifices by, required by the law. Okay, so now he can have a communion with his people, with man, because they've covered over the sin. It's still there, it's just covered over like a big heavy blanket. But he made that way so that he could have a relationship. Now the relationship that he had was very limited, wasn't it? It wasn't man to man to man to man. It was from God to the priest to man. Why? Because man rejected God. Even in that. They told, uh, excuse me, Moses. No, you go up and talk to God, we'll wait here, and then you tell us what he says. <laughs> and so was instituted the median, the, the go-between, the arbiter, if you will. Moses stood between them, and then Aaron, and, the, and it became the priests, the high priest and then the priest. They would come between man and God. Now, we have Jesus, knowing that he lived this life just like us. Scripture says he was tempted how many times? How many ways? In all ways. But he, the, the scripture adds, just like us. He was tempted in every way just like us. He's experienced everything you've gone through. Everything. Everything. Every temptation you've ever faced. And then they added on the end of that, and yet was without sin. He didn't say, he didn't say the temptation, okay, let's do it. He chose not to. He chose. He chose. He chose because he loved the Father. And I said, this is love for God to obey his commandments. At that particular time, his commandments was the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. It also includes the rest of the Bible, but the law was technically, like I was saying this morning, the Pentateuch. That's where the law is embodied, okay? He obeyed it. He probably memorized most of it, just like most of the Pharisees and Sadducees did. The young men of Israel, that's what they did. They, they memorized God's law, okay? So, we got Jesus. He was without sin. The difference between Jesus and us is that when he was born, he was not born with the original sin from Adam because the sin was passed down from the fathers, through the fathers. Okay? He was born of the Holy Spirit and Mary. The, the, the descendancy of, of sin was broken. Okay, so Jesus was without sin at birth, and I had a had a lady up in in Hamilton one time. She thought children were perfect. I said, "No, children are beautiful. They're not perfect." Oh yeah, they were born without sin. <laughs> you are so deceived, my darling. Children are not born without sin. I mean, do you teach your children to lie? Do you teach your children to steal? No, they do it naturally. Mine! Just like the seagull on, what's it? The, uh, 
Uh, Nemo, Finding Nemo. Mine, 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 mine. I saw two kids going at it one time, little kids. <laughs> that sounded just like them seagulls. Mine, 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 mine. <laughs> Fighting over some stupid thing. But that's the way we're born. Yes. Okay? Eat, sleep, and be cute, and the other thing. Okay? So this is what we do. We learn good. We are taught to be good. Don't do evil. Do good. That's how we're taught. Okay? So Jesus didn't have to be taught this. There was nothing inside him that drew him to the temptation. Okay? He was without sin. He knew that God said in his word, don't do that, do this. Okay? So he knew. He understood the problem, one of the unfortunate things is with man, we know it too. Because we're taught to do that. Well, most of us are taught to do good, not evil, okay? Who is it that overcomes the world, verse 5, only he believes that Jesus is the Son of God. They're the ones that overcome the world. We overcome the world through Jesus because he is the one who is without sin. He's the one that sets the example. This is the one who came by water and the blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement we accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony. You have this testimony, the testimony of God, in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar, made God out to be a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony of God has given about his son. This is the testimony. Testimony of God. This is what you have in your heart. God has given us eternal life. This life is in his son. This is God's testimony about Jesus. This is the testimony that we have in our hearts. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Probably the saddest verse in Scripture. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know, you may know that you have eternal life. That's why John wrote this stuff. So that you will know. These are factual statements that he wrote down. No. This is the assurance we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything, now there's a qualifier here, according to his will. So you can't just ask anything. It's got to be according to his will. He, now remember this scripture? This is off of this in here, a different one. He will give you the desires of your heart. It doesn't say he's going to give you what your heart desires. He will give you the desires. You can put the word in for your heart. Take his desires and put them in your heart. Desire what God desires. He will give you the desires of your heart. 
This is the assurance we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. You go to James and he talks about this when you ask for something and you doubt. As soon as you doubt, there's no reason whatsoever that God would give it to you. Why would you doubt God? God said right there, if you ask, he would give it. But we have to ask according to his will. The other scripture that says that doesn't have that little qualifier in it. That's why we go to all of scripture for context. Okay? We use all of scripture to determine the truth. Okay? So we can ask any God of anything. We can ask him for anything. But what you want to do is you want to stop for a moment. Okay. I want this. I want a red Mercedes SLE on all of the trimmings. Yeah, so you have to go back to God's word and you say, okay, God, is this what you want for me? No, I want you to get a Ford pickup truck. An old one. <laughs> okay, so make sure that when you're praying, you're not just flippantly asking for things. You know that this is something that God wants. I want Bob healed for his lungs and his breathing and all, all of that, all that's entailed in there. You know, that, that's what I desire. And I happen to know that that's what God wants too. God wants all of us to be healthy and healed and walking in complete health. Now, I don't know why he still has Bob in the condition that he's in. He may have some other purpose in mind. But I trust that that prayer is in accordance with his will because he wants that for all of his children. Now, I am not completely healed in my body. Evidence. Okay? Yeah, the first time I had to wear those, I got old. Okay. I am so sorry. Each of us knows what the will of God is. We do. We do. If you don't, please see me after the sermon, okay? Come up to me. Let's, let's talk about it. We know as children of God what the will of God is. It's right here. Okay? If you don't know, go in here. You can find it in the Old Testament, but it's a little bit harder digging. So I recommend go to the New Testament. Find out what Jesus said. Okay? And it'll tell you what the will of God is. To love Him. Love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love Him. Ah, but there's one more. You got to love your neighbor. Oh, him? Oh, you all got a picture of him too, didn't you? That one guy. It's not a lady, it's a guy. Oh, hard to love that guy. Oh, what a poop he is. And yet, that's the guy we're supposed to love. If we're to obey his commands, then we have to love our neighbor as ourself. Now, if you don't love yourself, how can the love of God be in you? Go back to chapter 2 of this book. You can go into that in detail. If you don't love, the love of God is not in you. Okay? It's not there. There's no way that you can love anybody, especially if you don't love God. If you don't love your neighbor, whom you can see, how can you love God if you can't see him? Whom you don't see. Okay? All right, look at verse uh, 16 and 17. Look at it in your own Bible. Read it through. 
Actually, it goes on into 18. All right, you see those? If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray and God will give him life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that he should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin. And there is sin that does not lead to death. This is talking about the saved who do sin. Good question. Let's go on. We know that anyone born of God, now we're specifying believers, does not continue to sin. The one who, born, who was born of God keeps himself, and the evil one does not touch him. Now, sin that leads to death, sin that does not lead to death. To answer your question, the sin that does not lead to death is speaking to believers. Okay? We sin, oops, not on purpose. But unbelievers, even if they sin on purpose, does not necessarily lead to death. Why? they can be redeemed. What is a sin that leads straight to death, do not pass go? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Now, that's kind of ambiguous. What is blaspheming the Holy Spirit? Okay. Which, which is Jesus. You reject Jesus. Okay, you attribute the works of God to the enemy, which is a total rejection of Jesus. When you when you take it all back, rejection of Jesus is the the sin that leads to death. Okay. No, no. Were you born again? Okay. Uh, were you forgiven? Well, hang on a second. Let's, let's go through this. <laughs> if you did, you would know. Okay. Let me, let me just put it that way. You would know. Um, but what is, what is, what is forgiveness? What, what was forgiven in your life? You don't have to identify name by name, but what was forgiven in regards to sin? Say what? Huh? Yes. Everything. Everything. Don't be ashamed of it. Everything. Everything. You were forgiven. All million and ten of them. And seventeen. And, and, and if you're still doing it, then what you need to do is bring it to God. Why am I still doing this? If I love you, why am I still doing this? Because it says to obey his commands, right? I'm sorry to pick on you, but you brought it up, so <laughs> on guard. <laughs> okay, so God loves you. He wants you to be like his son. He wants you to walk like his son. So, when you do this sin, are you aware of it, that it's a sin? Okay, now let me, let me just tell you this, okay? You don't have to. All right, you got Bible there? Go back to chapter 2. Will you please read verse 1? Out of your own Bible there. Okay. Please. Okay, what does that say? Yeah. How did, how, what did he give you to help you to not do it? This is for everybody now. Uh, yeah, the set of instructions. 
Yeah. These were written so that you would not sin. And I've said it over and over and over again. You don't have to sin. You said you're going to sin tomorrow. Why? Quit it. No, I'm serious. Why? Wow. What do you do when you realize you did it? Okay, you just sinned again, so you compounded the problem, but what do you do then? You realize. What do you mean, what am I supposed to do? No, 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 I'm asking you, brother, what do you do? Not what I'm supposed to do. Why? It's a choice. Choose you, Joshua said this, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay? Um, David was the apple of God's eye. What did he do? He murdered one of his best soldiers so that he could get at his wife. Because he's already got her pregnant. He already got at her. Now, when the priest, or the prophet, came up to David and told him to his face, you are the man, what did David do? He repented. I am. I am. I am that man. I have sinned. And that's all you got to do. If you want to start following after Jesus, hard. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be an uphill battle. Like you're carrying 14 men's packs for them. That's the struggle you're going to have. I tell you this because I've been there. I've struggled with those packs. Get them off your back. Leave them. Drop them. Repent of your sins. You do not have to sin. You have been set free, brother. You have been set free. The chains are broken. Who did that? Jesus. Who did he do it for? You and me. Brother, I was in the Marine Corps for 20 years. You think I didn't sin? Oh, my. You have no idea. You have no idea. But I'm forgiven. I am walking at this moment in perfection. I am not a sinner from this moment on. From here on, I walk a perfect life. And tomorrow, continue reading verse 1 in chapter 2. Right from where you left off. But if anybody does sin, Ooh. we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ. There you go. But if we do, oops. Shut that foul trap in my face, you know. I've been there. Oh, what did I say? I am so sorry. Forgive me to the people you're speaking with. <laughs> and I don't care who they are. Tell them you're sorry. Amen. 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 Oh, I was reminded in John, uh, Jesus tells the paralytic, you've been made well, you know, sin no more, so nothing more happens. Yes, go and sin no more. Yes. You have a choice. All of us has a choice. Okay? If we remember Joshua and his speech to the people, you know, he tells them, choose you this day whom you will serve. And he's got a couple more things that he says in there. But at the end of it, he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose. That's what we have to do. How were you born again? You chose. You realized who you were. What's going on in your life. How worthless your life. My life was headed for the dump. For the trash heap. My wife and I were not going to be married when I got home. I was in Okinawa, by the way. 
she was back in California. That's it. We weren't going to be married anymore. And God got a hold of both of us. Saved her. She sicked the whole church on me. They started praying for me. I didn't have a chance, praise God. And I was born again. And when I came home, we had to get to know each other all over again. We were new people. Amen. Amen, hallelujah. So we have to choose. Each one of us has a choice to make. There's people in our lives that have choices to make. They look at us. They know us. Our family knows us. They know what kind of stinkers we were. That's what J. Vernon McGee calls it. We were stinkers we were. I, I love him. They know us. Just like the people in Jesus' hometown, they knew him. Hey, aren't you the carpenter's son? We know you. Who do you think you are talking like this? And he was not able to do but a few miracles because of their unbelief. Okay, so, each one of us in this world, including the people we share with, the people we talk to, have a choice to make. We must choose this day whom we will serve. If it's going to be the world, then just go home. Go serve the world. Because you will not be any good. You will be a representative of God because you're born again. Let's just use you for an example, okay? Or we can just use me. Um, I can just go home. But I'm still a child of God. But I am ignoring God's calling. And I am. Yep. Yep. Act like a butt. Yes. You are an ambassador for Christ. You are a representative of Christ. You may not be a good one, but you still represent him. And what happens when you pass through that fire is all of your works get burned up, but you pass through. Your rewards will be like, eh, here's a peanut. Actually, what it's called is, here's your salvation. And now you're going to live all of eternity realizing what you failed to do while you were here. What you did with that salvation. That's all. You'll be in heaven. You'll be with him. And he will love you just as much as he does Beth. Or Fran. He'll love you just as much. Just as fiercely. And he will hold on to you and hug you to himself. Just like he would any, any other Christian. You betcha. Sure. 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 You bet. You bet. Because you're doing it for him, not yourself. It's all done for him. When you give somebody a glass of water in Jesus' name, it's it's for him. Yeah. Yeah, good strength. Oh, good. Well done, good and faithful servant. And he, he just pats you on the back. He gives you a big hug. He says, go on, go forth, go on. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Uh, the, in James it says, uh, don't be hearers of the word only and so deceive yourselves. Be doers of the words. Do what it says. Okay? Excellent questions. Excellent questions. Good. Grow in the Lord, brother. Grow in the Lord. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions 
on its face and I know they feel the presence of the Lord sweet Holy Spirit sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us filling us with your love and for these blessings we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall live this place. Amen. Amen. 305. Let's see. 305. Oh, I like that one. <clears throat> Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne makes all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless and since he bids me seek his face believe his word and trust his grace i'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air farewell farewell sweet hour of prayer amen you know that when he says come up here Prayer is no longer needed. It's no longer necessary. I mean, you're with him right there in his presence. Oh, 
Amen. Anybody? What do you got? So we found the song, but I don't remember how it goes. So What's the number? It's number two. Num this is my father's song. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We know that one. So much for the house, right? <laughs> but there is one that says that, and I cannot remember what it is. <laughs> this is, let's see. This is my father's word unto my listening ears. All nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hands the wonders wrought. Okay, now wait a minute. This is not Wayne sings today. We sing today, and I can't hear you. I know I'm loud and boisterous. Remember, don't sing to me, don't sing to your neighbor. This is praise to God. Sing to him. Picture yourself in the throne room, okay? Uh, f f uh, picture the Colosseum in Rome. And God's sitting, it's sitting on the throne, way up in one end of the Colosseum. And right in the middle of the field is you. Just you. And you're singing to him. This is my father's world. Verse 2 now. The birds that cools raise, the warning light, the lily white, where their makers raise. This is my father's world. He shines in all that's fair in the rustling grass I hear him pass he speaks to me everywhere this is my father's world oh let me there forget that though the wrong seeds of souls This is my father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus to die shall be satisfied. And earth and heaven be one. Amen. Amen. Listen to that, that last verse. 
the chorus there. The things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and face. So when you turn your eyes on Jesus, you're going through the day, and you're having troubles, you're having thoughts that are bothering you, and things are going on around you, and you get some bad news, you turn your eyes on the Lord. You turn it on, onto Jesus. You picture him in your mind. You look full into his face. Jesus, my Lord, the only one who can take care of these things. Guess what happens to all of the worries and the troubles? Do they go away? Not necessarily, but they become smaller and dimmer. As you look at him, your worry starts to dissipate. It turns to just concern. And it can turn into rejoicing. Even through troubles and trials. They say if you're praying to Jesus, it has exactly what you just said. If you're praying to him, you can't worry. Yeah, isn't that amazing how that works? I know, you can't do what you were doing if you're praying to Jesus. Amen. Amen. He commands us. Don't worry. Don't worry. I don't know. There was uh, something that Chuck was going over the other night, and I was going through Proverbs again, and there's this one spot. He must have said, you know, six or seven times in this one passage, don't worry. Do not be worried. Don't worry. I think he was really serious when he said that. <laughs> And I think he meant it. But how do we get there? Turn our eyes on him. You know, Lord, I got this thing in my life. And I just don't know. Oh, you've got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's got it. You know, we, we try to hang on to the little things, you know. And let God worry about the big things. But one thing that we forget is that it's all little stuff to Him. It's all little stuff to Him. Let's be verse 2. Through death into life everlasting He has that we follow Turn your eyes upon Jesus. 
81. Where are we at here? I got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be something. You want to begin? Oh uh -huh. 
happens in my life. Yep. My soul is preserved. I'm saved. Uh -huh. Wonderfully, wonderfully saved. For all eternity. No one can take that from me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anybody got another song? 391. Let's try that one. 390. 391. Yeah. <coughs> See if we can get a good key here. Yeah. <coughs> All right. I'll start. Uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
like it like that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I pray, Lord, that our praise has worked out as it was and our songs were pleasing. Because it's from our heart. We do love you. We do love you, Lord.